surgery March 5th of this year. Um, went in for what millions of women, I'm sure, go in for a standard hysterectomy. And um, they got in there and everything changed. Like there was just way more going on in there than what any x-ray or CAT scan showed. Um, and so it, you know, it was supposed to be just vaginally and then they actually had to like cesarean. Uh, it just was, it, they couldn't take everything out that needed to come out. It was just bad. Um, so I uh, woke up <laughs> and they said that was worse than we thought and it's going to be okay. Your bladder was fused to your uterus with some endometriosis and um, we had to take, cut this little piece out of an intestine um, because a cyst had grown from an ovary into the intestine and the little list just went on. Oh. And um, I said, okay, well, uh, great. Uh, how am I now? And they're like, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> I mean, what do you say at that moment, right? Like, <laughs> it's like, gosh. And I'm like, okay, I'm alive. I'm like talking, like it's good. Like we're gonna keep it moving, right? That's my motto. We're gonna keep it moving. Yeah. So um, they sent me home and um, that was March 5th. Now, if anyone knows the timeline, <laughs> you will know and be able to put the pieces together that I went home on March 5th in the evening and I didn't feel so hot, but I wasn't feeling terrible until later that week. And it just progressively got worse. And there was weird swelling and weird places. And um, the pain wasn't bad. That was the thing. I, I just realized I must have a really high pain tolerance at this point. Like the pain wasn't bad. I wasn't taking the pain meds, but things were swelling that were not supposed to be swelling. And um, I was getting greener and greener by the day. The problem, um, and the problem with your, I understand with surgeries is that you could have, a, you know, an inflammation or infection. Exactly. Right. So you automatically go there first, I guess. Um, yeah. Wow. And my mom's a nurse and I called her on the phone and we did a video chat and we just really, it just didn't feel quite right, but it wasn't bad enough to go out into the height of hospitals that week, which is when COVID hit New York City. And my doctor was in Brooklyn. So we were teetering this fine line of like, if it gets bad enough, we're gonna go and we're not going anywhere. We don't have masks. We were in surgery, right? We don't have masks, we don't have gloves. Like that, the world changed in the 24 hours that I was in. Um, and so, I had a one week follow-up on a Thursday, that next Thursday. And by the time I got there, it was bad. Like I didn't feel good. Um, and I walked into the doctor's office, I remember, and he looked at me and he said, you're going to the ER now. And they put me in a wheelchair and took me across the street and they admitted me. And that was a moment that I didn't care I didn't care. I was so uncomfortable. And what had happened is my kidneys were in like complete failure because the, the bladder wasn't working after being peeled off and put back properly. And it was a strange uh, time in the ER because that was now COVID full force. And we didn't know it yet because it wasn't quite on the airwaves, but you could just see from my room right? In ER, curtains here, me looking out. <laughs> That's all you see is what you see. It was just flurry, nonstop flurry, nurses, assistants, doctors. And I was like, something's going on here. Like something really big is going on here. And I didn't know what it was. And honestly, I didn't really care because once they got me drained, I was feeling way better and just knew I was in good hands. Um, and so for- Was it all like plugging, like filling up in your kidneys because it couldn't get released yeah. the toxins couldn't get out and other places like for some reason the water the doctor says the water just goes where it goes <laughs> and and it just fills and so there was like a weird pocket um like on my abdomen that was like obsessed if you will like it was just huge um and then down in my thigh it was just weird it was just all very weird um 
but they took care of me as soon as I got there. And I'm glad that I went because I, you, you can't live that long that way. No. Um, and listen, my spouse was not equipped to handle that level of care that was needed that week. Um, it was like, I'd get up off the couch and I'd throw up because it was just such excruciating, like just getting up off the couch. Um, but it was weird because it wasn't in my stomach. It wasn't where the surgery site was. So whatever, we finally got where we were going and I got the help I needed, but everything had changed and, um, we were sent home. Uh, so I was in the ER, they admitted me into the hospital. I was there for three days during that three days you know, you have to walk, you got to go to the bathroom before they release you. You got to like, they needed to do what they need to do. But I remember walking up and down that hospital ward and it was crazy. Every day I went out, there was another door shut and another sign on it that said COVID. And then there was another one the next day and then another one the next day. And I'm like, nobody knew to wear masks yet. Like I was just walking around. Like, I'm like, I got to get out of here. Like something's up <laughs> happening in this hospital. And so I was sent home on Sunday and I came home at 11 AM and a Sunday night, I was back in an ER in New Jersey because I could not go to the bathroom on my own again. Oh. And so this was the cycle. And now I was with a whole bunch of people hacking and coughing. Right. So one of the things I want to say is I did a whole bunch of spiritual work <laughs> for 2020 in lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes in that 10 days, because I was like, I didn't die from my kidneys and I sure the hell ain't dying from COVID and we're going to keep it moving here. And that's been my motto the rest of this year is like, I did my spiritual work. <laughs> Good for you because it must've felt like you were in a movie. I felt like it took a while, like months. I felt like I was just like, it's the, the best way I can describe it is I went into the hospital on March 5th and I came out and I was so sick those next 10 days, the, but the whole world changed. Not only did I change because I went through this thing, but the whole world had changed. And it was like, I couldn't catch up to, to the new thing. And by the way, every glove, every mask, every food item, toilet paper, which wasn't even needed to be a thing. Uh, you know, it's not yeah. like that kind of flu. It was all gone. My family was having to ship us stuff from Illinois um, because we didn't have, we couldn't get to the store. We couldn't go anywhere that week. We were like, just trying to keep me alive. So it was, I'm glad I'm here. Let's just say that. <laughs> that is craziness. Yeah. And what, did, I guess you didn't think of anything with your spouse and yourself about, you know, am I prepared for any bad news? Because you're just trying to cope. You're trying to get through this new information that you've been given. And why is my body yeah. not working? And I guess it's, it's, uh, it doesn't put you into a fact of, okay, what if I do die? Because you're just trying to live. Well, and I think that's true, but also before that is like, how many people do we know that have had hysterectomies and it's been fine? Everyone. Normal In fact, thing. One percent of women have this problem. And I didn't, it was supposed to be simple. Two hours, wake up, go home, like keep it moving. <laughs> And it just wasn't, and I don't blame anyone for that. It, it yeah. is what it is, but, um, you know, maybe if I have another surgery, I'll think, I hate to think worst case scenario, cause it's not who I am, but I probably should have thought a little harder about, well, what if it doesn't quite go the way that we think it will, but I have that knowledge now. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately we all have something that happens to us before we realize how unprepared we actually are. But you do, you did have a will and a power of attorney, mm -hmm. you said, yeah. but nothing else. And yeah. how did that streamline into your self-employed business? You're an entrepreneur. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, about a month after that, maybe six weeks, I kind of lost all track of time. Like most of us have, you know, like this year. Um, but I was talking to my friend one day, who's also an entrepreneur. Um, and the next day she had passed away and it was weird. And, and I thought, 
well, one, it was sad. And two, I thought, gosh, what, are, what, what happens with all her clients? Right? Like, and that's when it hit me too, because I had just gone through this and I thought, what do I do with all my clients and students if I passed away? I haven't talked to anyone about that. I, you know, do they get a refund? Like what the heck happens? I hadn't even thought about it. And that was an eye opener. That was a big eye opener because I have a significant brand. I've got a significant, um, you know, client roster and, and honestly, uh, above and beyond the clients, I've got a community who loves me and somebody's going to have to tell them something when I don't show up. <laughs> right. Right. So this is on the books for next month to talk over with my financial team of like, what is the plan? What, what should be happening here? Because I just had never even thought about it until my friend passed away. So what I try to educate self-employed people with is setting up that person that you can call a partner when, mm -hmm. when time hits, because you also have to have a system in place to contact those clients mm -hmm. um, to transform them into a different person just for the time being. Because then if they have something happen to them, they do the same for you and you do the same for them. Mm -hmm. but you have to set up that team to uh, that. That's your business backup plan. That yeah. would be um, so that they can keep it going up until the time you can get back. Yeah. And they are also um, able to be in um, always in consistent contact with your clients so that they know what's going on, which fails if you get sick and unable to do any of that. Yeah. You know, now in this, I have a team of five. They've been with me for years. Um, we're having our first, well, we're having an official team retreat in January. And I think this should be one of the things that while we're all together, we figure out exactly like what's going to happen. Um, because what did happen was I, I was able, or it was actually my spouse contacted my business manager and she was able to communicate with the client care person to reach out to the clients, cancel things on the schedule. But there's other things too, right? Like who's can canceling the Zoom account? Who's can canceling like the bank accounts? Like it's, it's, a, it's beyond just what we can see right here because it would be right. like a domino effect. So I think at our team retreat, we'll <laughs> deal with the tough issue of what are we doing if, if something happens? Because somebody needs a plan that's in the brand and knows it. Exactly. And um, there might be different puzzle pieces of different people that will do different parts of that. Yeah. But it's, it's just the sense of to the listeners and to you, Shannon, to, to have the thought of the what if. Mm -hmm. You know, what if I didn't die? What if I was just in a coma? What if I yeah. never had come through two for two or three months? Mm -hmm. what does that picture look like? And you have to go through those types of different analogies to come up with different solutions and then put that plan together. And that's what we do in the membership blueprint program mm -hmm. is help yeah. you guide you through that process yeah. um, as well as webinars, which are going to be on zoom live events um, to bring in other entrepreneurs to talk about these things that are in their minds as well, because then it, it gives you ideas. It gives um, other entrepreneurs ideas of how they can set up their own backup plan. But yeah. I, I appreciate that because it brings up, it's funny how things bring up these ideas of really not feeling secure, not yeah. feeling prepared. Um, mm -hmm. And you're here to tell us this story, which is fabulous. Mm. And Thank not, you. Uh, you know, not being that it, it could have gone wrong in so many forms. Yeah. I love at the beginning of your show where you said, I interview live people and I'm like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank God I was still living to be able to Tell process me. this and, and share it. Right. Like right. <laughs> you can't interview a dead person. <laughs> no. And no. Um, but I wish I could because. Yeah just think of all the things that they would say 
all mm. the things that they wish they would have done, all the things that they wish they wouldn't have left the burden on those that they love. Yeah. Um, because um, when we are self-employed, we haven't just left our own personal stuff, our crap behind for them, but we've now left a small business crap yeah. of trying to sort out. Like yeah. what if, what if you got, you know, in a car accident, you're actually unable to do your job. Mm -hmm. What, you know, how do you want that to look? Yeah. So there's so many different analogies, uh, scenarios of what if. Yeah. And it's, I think, you know, you mentioned the Zoom uh, webinars coming in. I think it's important because you had said like entrepreneurs that are thinking about it, but I think equally important is those of us who aren't thinking about it. Yes. And I can think about it now only because I was there. I would like, we just, you we just think we're going to live forever. Let's be real. Like, you're <laughs> we're Superman. Just, yeah. We're just going through our days, doing our thing. And, and so I, it's important. The work you're doing is really important. And thank you. Well, thank you. I, I, I try to bring this out to everyone because it might be just a little tiny bit of the puzzle that, mm. that you feel like, especially women, we, we want to feel secure. There's nothing worse than not feeling secure in our life. Yeah, Actually, it's true. <laughs> it's you know, true. whether it's a relationship, not feeling secure, whether it's um, a business or a job that you have, um, and if we don't have that security, um, and, and if we're looking at the what if, why are we going to worry about it after the fact that that's horrible? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I just try and show you different ways of getting everything together. That's easy. <laughs> and um, I, I just love your story because we all go in for this normal surgery. How many of us do that on an annual basis? Yeah. And it's not normal when we come out. Yeah. And it's something that we should probably all um, also ask our doctors. <laughs> like, okay, this is, they tell you the best case scenario, right? So like, okay, what if it's not? Yeah. <laughs> and I had a conversation with my doctor afterwards when I was better. And I said, you know, you never told me about the 1%. He said, I've never had to tell anyone about the 1%. <laughs> oh, dear. And, um, and even through all that, like, I, I still feel a million times better than I did before that hysterectomy. Like, my life has changed. The, I'm just on a whole different, like, level of life, right? Because I don't have the discomfort of the fibroids and the periods and all of that stuff. So, um, it took me going through all of that to get here. And for that, I'm still super grateful because, um, I feel good. I feel really good. Well, and you're grateful for, uh, the eye opening that it's allowed you to, to have in yeah. the, in the world right now, especially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet you're grateful for your life and who you have around you. And it brings a whole other picture in your mind. Yeah. And you know, uh, we hear a lot, don't sweat the small stuff. It, it really makes sense now. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> oh, that, that was small stuff. Like, like, you know, I don't know the, the extra bill for five grand. Oh, that's just small stuff. Like we're going to yeah. keep it moving. Like it's it doesn't really money. matter. <laughs> just money doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's a really amazing story. I hope that um, people can really delve into their own thought process of their own, maybe a small business, or they think they're prepared with having a will and a power of attorney. And really, in fact, you had a whole lot of other things you need to uh, do with your, with your own plan. Um, what does your spouse, how did she, you know, did they go through something too in their own, you know, it's not just about you, of course. Yeah. I think, um, well, we definitely learned she doesn't need to be a nurse or <laughs> any, any person that has to deal with bodily fluids, not her zone of genius. <laughs> um, but all jokes aside, uh, 
sometimes you hear this thing about uh, sympathy pains, right? And she actually experienced that. And it was crazy. It was like, she was so focused on where I was hurting and trying to make it better, however we could, more comfortable, that within that week, she started having the same symptoms. <laughs> Not to that extent, but like yeah. her back hurt, then her kidneys hurt, that, like it was crazy. Um, so it was interesting that we went through that together. Um, and, you know, even this morning we, we had a cup of coffee and she said, you know, 2020 has been really bizarre, but I'm so grateful that you're here and you're alive and you're healthy. And that's been like the thing, right? It's just like deep gratitude. We're trying to stay really present for ourselves and our lives and our meaningful relationships and, and for each other. And, um, yeah, she had to do her own spiritual yeah. <laughs> evolution through it all because there were times I'm sure that I know because she expressed it later. Um, you know, I wasn't sure you're going to make it. I'm not sure what I was going to do about it. Um, so she had her own stuff to, to go through. Yeah, because um, it was fact. It was you're, you're presented with it. Yeah, yeah. But we're good now. <laughs> yes and you're still in COVID <laughs> still in COVID <laughs> um but like I said and and this is a difference between both of us like she's much more cautious and fearful of COVID um than I am I think that experience for me was like I'm not saying COVID do doesn't exist I'm not saying that I couldn't get COVID but what I'm saying is I don't have any fear around it. And I've actually traveled. I've been on flights since May. Um, I've gone to see my family. That was important to me. Um, I went out to California and saw some clients, you know, one at a time. And, um, and I've taken some road trips and she hasn't joined in any of those because it's not her comfort level and that's okay too. And so we've learned to navigate um, two people who are very different ends of the spectrum of what we're comfortable with in terms of keeping, keeping going during COVID. And as I always say to everyone, love is what wins at the end. And I can love her and respect where she is. And she loves me and respects where I am. And we don't make anyone wrong for it. And it's been beautiful. It's been a beautiful process. That's awesome because there really is no right or wrong. No, there's not. It's just how you feel and how she feels and yeah. Yeah. So, um, I will tell a little funny is when I went back into the hospital when we didn't know what was going on and I came back out and the doctor came to visit, he said, you're good. You're going to really go home this time. I said, now this was March 11th. I said, good, because we're going to Hawaii next month for our 10 year anniversary. Uh oh. And he looked at me. And he said, I don't think you're going to Hawaii next month. And I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, I know you've been out of it and you guys have been preoccupied, but like, we've got this thing called COVID going on <laughs> and I think you should reschedule. And it was just like, I didn't get it I, because I was just, I wasn't in the new news and in the know, we had no energy for it. And so we did reschedule our, um, 10 year anniversary trip for September. And that got canceled as well because Hawaii wasn't open yet. Um, and Maria's just not comfortable traveling. Right. So um, that was kind of a funny. And that was when I realized like, shit, the world did change. Like, <laughs> like it's going up, like now I kind of get it. Like I cut, but you know, once I got home and could feel halfway decent, I did turn on the news and that's when I was like, oh shit. Yeah. We're in something. <laughs> we are in this crap. <laughs> I had to tell that story. That's kind of funny. <laughs> it, it is funny. The doctor must've thought, boy, you're really on something really good. <laughs> yeah. Well, he knew that I just hadn't, I mean, when you're that sick, you're not, you're not even in this world. You're just yeah. like trying to you're go to the bathroom, breathe. <laughs> You're whatever's coming breathing. up like deal with it you know <laughs> you're coping you're just breathing that's it you're not living you're breathing that's it so 
I'm glad I remembered that. That's yeah, that's that's a, a, that's a good twist to the whole story, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun. Well, I appreciate. Did you have anything else you wanted to mention to listeners about your unusual but funny story? No, I think uh, you know if I could just give any words of wisdom at the end, because um, <laughs> I am not a doomsday person, so I'm not going to tell you to prepare for the worst, but. Like, I think we're given opportunities that help us see things in new ways and choose, then you get to choose um, who you're gonna be on the other side. And I choose joy and I choose love. And that was very clear before, but it's even more clear now. Um, so you can use every experience as like a learning tool to, yes. to live a more fulfilling, meaningful life. That's absolutely beautiful. I will use that quote from you. Beautiful. That's Thank you. Lovely. Thank you for, for telling our listeners to, um, to think of, we need more love, especially since this has gone on way too long. Uh, we do need more love in our life. And I think I might end it there. That was absolutely beautiful, Shannon. I so appreciate your story and your courage through all of this this year and your funny, joyful add-ins to, to what you have uh, told us. Um, say hello to Maria. I, I'm sure she has a whole other story she could tell us. <laughs> yeah. um, but I appreciate it. Thank you listeners for taking the time because you know your backup plan puts your life in one place in preparation of any, any unpredictable circumstance. I would consider that as an unpredictable circumstance while well, taking the painful aftermath out of any tragedy because it might not be, you know, uh, passing away or something. It might be just a new disability, a new sickness, a, an injury. It, it might be a coma. It might be cancer. It might be any tragedy. And this is definitely one of of those uh, unusual circumstances that we sometimes forget. Anytime we go under the knife, we have to think about what if, mm -hmm. um, even when it's a day surgery, we think, you know, I just recently had one too. And in my mind, I thought of what if things don't go normal. Mm -hmm. So it puts you into a different place, but you have to stay positive like Shannon. And I appreciate your quote of the day. So um, everyone, listeners, um, I appreciate, I hope that we've inspired you and motivated you to start thinking about your own plan, about your own life, about your partner, about how, how this could um, change your life. And take a moment and subscribe to our channel and click on the bell for any notifications. And I always end it now. Um, I always try to start with a quote and end with a quote. And Carol Burnett has always been dear to my heart growing up. So I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh and sing a song. Seems we just get started. And before you know it, comes the time we have to say so long. That was... I don't know why that hit me, but it did. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> she Beautiful. always laughed when she said it, though. I really need to make that twist on it. <laughs> yeah. No.